So I would say like if you are in in the early stage of your career, you would want to be at a place where you get to see the overall pipeline, where you're part of like a project or like you could lead a project. So I think that is more valuable than um, just working on like one small part. Welcome everyone today to the Tech Guide podcast where we give actual advice to those wanting to break into tech or looking for their next gig. We have Swar Dockard on the podcast today to talk about his story coming over from India, getting into Columbia, working at Unity and now at Jenny's. Thank you so much for being here today, Swar. Super, super excited to talk to you about your story. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yes. And we are going to, I just alluded to what we are going to talk about. And I want to talk about coming over from India because you originally got your bachelor's of engineering, a BE in computer science over there. Then you come over here and get into a little university called Columbia University. Uh, Take me to getting accepted into Columbia and finding out that you were, oh crap, I might be going to Columbia. Do you, uh, yeah, take me to that moment. Sure. That's a pretty, uh, I would say interesting story because I had no intention of coming to the states for my masters because i didn't know that you can you can do that actually <laughs> like i was so unaware like uh when i was doing my undergrad like um till my second year uh doing my undergrad i had no like idea that you can go for masters and then one day like randomly playing i was playing cricket with my seniors and then like all the seniors like started like congratulating this one guy and I was like, okay, what happened? Like, maybe he got like good job in India itself, right? Uh, but then they were like, no, 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 he's going to the states for masters. And I'm like, oh, you can do that. And then I, that that was the time like I got to know about it, and then I got curious. And then I was like, okay, I need to talk to this guy. So I like decided to like go up and like, hey, can you like talk to me like for like some time, and then tell me like how did you do this, um, and how can I do this? So that's when I got to know that like you have to give like certain exams like GRE, TOEFL and all and then I got interested I was like okay fine yeah I can do that but then um he told me that you need to have like good GPA like research paper and everything and I was like I haven't done that like I was not like aiming for that (laughs) yeah so from then I started like really working on my GPA uh, I started, there was a professor, I, I got lucky because there was a professor who was doing research and machine learning, which not a lot of people in like, uh, from the, from my university would do for a lot of professor would do. So, um, I, I got with him, like working on this research project. I finished that project. We wrote a research paper. I went to the conference to, uh, delivered it and, uh, did the project. Uh, and then meanwhile, I was also trying to like get up my GPA so, uh, to apply to these colleges. Yeah, and then uh, once I did that, I worked worked on my GRE preparation, which didn't take a lot, like maybe like three months. And uh, uh, yeah, then I started applying. So when I was uh, applying, I I was like, okay, at best if I get like any like state university, I'll be uh, <laughs> I'll be content, like I'll be happy. Yeah. Uh, so I typically like people would like break their uh, applications and like. Um, moderate, safe university and ambitious. So like Columbia was definitely my ambitious. And uh, so the first, but but the first admit that I got was from CMU, but the program was uh, information technology and privacy engineering, which was pretty uh, different from what I've been doing, but uh, it was interesting enough. Like I talked to the director and gave the interview and everything. And when I was just like almost finalizing that, I got the admit from Columbia. And then I was like, oh, no, maybe I need to do, I need to stick to like what I, I uh, want and I enjoy. So that's how I uh, came to Columbia. Like, uh, what was the reaction from like your family and like your friends when it's like, oh, I'm going to Columbia. Like that, that like it's a big <laughs> time to go to. What was the <laughs> that? That was, uh, that was also interesting because uh, I was at a party with my friend and it was his birthday and everyone was like, there for him and then at the same time i got the mail <laughs> from columbia and i was like bro i got admitted into columbia and he's like what and then he's like you stole my charm like something from friends uh so <laughs> yeah that was it and it, it was really um a good moment i would say interesting so i have uh so my question for you is like one like what's like the alert so you're in india like what's the alert like the want to come over to the united states like I also think it's like super interesting. Like, why did you want to come over to the United States for like a master's? 
so when I talked to my senior senior, which I talk, uh, talked about earlier, he he said that like for doing machine learning, which I was doing at that time, uh, no other colleges in India were doing at the level uh, that universities in the US were. And the job prospect after that were better in, in the United States. So those were the two things, like the quality and the level of education. Plus, uh, I, I'm not saying like the level of education is not really good in India, but also like the, at that time, uh, uh, the topics and the machine learning that were going on here were not uh, at, at par with the Indian universities. Interesting. So yeah, it sounds like it was kind of like, if I'm thinking long term about like career, it's like what I'm interested in. It sounds like the United States was like kind of like a no brainer to come over to. Yeah. And I'm also curious uh, off of that then, like what, what, like why Columbia? Like, was there a, re- a particular reason like why you wanted to go to Columbia besides yeah. being a normal school? <laughs> so like out of all the uh, uh, like admits that I got, the top most choices were CMU and Columbia because just they've been like top 10 um, schools uh, in in CS and I chose Columbia because it was more like generic uh, computer science course and uh, program and then uh, they had like different specializations so I could choose like machine learning data science and other so that was just giving me more options with what I can do uh, and what would I want to do with my master's so that's why I did Columbia and also New York City so Yeah. uh, yeah Not a bad spot to be. Um, yeah. So you go to Columbia, you're studying like computer science, machine learning track. I should see some of your relevant courses like anal- uh, analysis of algorithms, like machine learning, artificial intelligence, natural learning processing, all these. So then you then take these and then go via machine learning intern at Unity Technologies. Talk mm-hmm. to me about getting like that very first internship with Unity um, on their machine learning team. Yeah, sure. Um... It was difficult, I would say, uh, because uh, directly I was coming from my undergrad. I didn't have any work experience. Yeah. So uh, just to get like the first job over in US without any experience, I think it's difficult for anyone. Uh, and being from not from like the top institutes in India, like IITs or NITs, um, it was much more difficult. But um, I don't know, like I think uh, I was taking a course at Unity, uh, 3D AR. Uh, and in, in that course, they were using Unity. And to be honest, I was not doing pretty good in that, in that course. It was really <laughs> difficult course for me. <laughs> but but because I was using Unity, I had Unity yeah. in my resume. And somehow it got picked up, maybe like the keywords. And that that's when I came to know like de- designing your resume, using those keywords is really important. Getting, getting like the uh, call from uh, for the interview, right? So... That's how I got uh, the call for for the interview at Unity, and then I passed the interview, and then I landed the internship. I love that. That's awesome. So, were there any conversations with them? Obviously, you broke in because you had like some good keywords on there. But was there any concern from them, like, like, uh, like you don't like have any work experience, and if like, how did you overcome that? I think the good thing about Unity intern cohort was they were not like really looking for experienced uh, uh, people like uh, with ton of experience, but with just like right, uh, machine learning fundamentals and other software engineering fundamentals, I think that they were looking for that because what they do is like they bring those interns and then they they like convert them to full-time employees if they uh, like really perform well over their internship. So that's their goal, like to invest in their interns so that they can come back as full-time employees. So yeah, so I, I did my interviews pretty well. Uh, uh, co- they covered like all uh, machine learning fundamentals and uh, yeah, the, and probably they thought like I was the right fit. Yeah, I like that they uh, took a bet on someone that's like, uh, like he like you might not have like all the experience, but like it's kind of like that one to learn and like when you, it speaks to a company a lot when like they do that just because like they trust themselves so much to be able to like develop someone. One uh, one more thing that I would like to add was. Uh, as, as I knew that I don't have experience. So while at Columbia, I started doing like an unpaid internship uh, mm-hmm. and a research assistance position within Columbia. So so I had to get something on my resume, right? So yeah. uh, I, I was like, I need to do something. So so on weekends, I would go to this uh, like uh, in uptown, sorry, downtown uh, Manhattan, there was this uh, company and I would work for them. I was totally unpaid, and uh, wow. but that was fine. Uh, for me because um, I was I had to gain some experience 
So I was like, yeah, why not? And then I also did this research uh, assistance position, uh, position with uh, with a professor. And uh, those two things also had like showing like, okay, this guy has done something. It's not like uh, it's totally fresh or something. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like it like working with professors as well in that capacity, like I feel like you can get like a phenomenal um, reference from them as well then to be like, yeah. like if you need a reference, like trust me, I have a professor from Columbia that will uh, vouch for me. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. So then, so you have this internship and as you said, you go to like, you're at Columbia, you have some uh, graduate teaching assistant positions, and then you go back to Unity um, as machine learning engineer. So obviously you did a great job as an internship to be invited back. Um, talk to me about like this first full-time gig with Unity. Like what are some of the projects as a machine learning engineer you're working on um, in this role? So that was a, a bit different from uh, internship because the uh, internship, you have like your supervisor and everyone helping you. Yeah, yeah. And now you're out there, like you're given a project and you need to figure out stuff. So that was pretty interesting. And I was part of the applied machine learning research team. So I would say that was like a standalone team, like, we didn't have like support of like other, let's say like backend team or infrastructure team, yeah. right? So we would have to do everything by ourselves. So that was pretty interesting because I uh, got to like wear a lot of like different hats. So one day I was machine learning engineer, I was, other day I was software, other day I was like doing infrastructure work, right? That's so cool. that was pretty good because I got to know like all the dimension of uh, how a machine learning engineer would work and uh, uh, I got like all the experience and uh, like the main project that we were working was uh, using synthetic data, generating synthetic data using the data editor to like train computer vision models. So like people like would want to like uh, detect cat in their uh, like room with the indoor security camera, right? But they don't have enough images to train the model. So we would like generate like the uh, synthetic data for that and uh, improve the model performance. That's really cool. And I feel like working at like a company like Unity, I, 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 to me, it's like actually a little surprising that you wore so many different hats because I feel like it's such like a big company, but like having that experience early on to like know what you like to work on um, is like so invaluable, especially in like a field of like machine learning where it could be like such a big industry. Yeah, exactly. And um, I, I first had this notion of like machine learning engineer would just work on, you know, like machine learning problems, but it, yeah. it's not that it is much more. I would say it's just software engineering plus machine learning is what a machine learning engineer would do in day-to-day -day work. Interesting. And so, I mean, it is that, but like, I feel like, is there, correct me if I'm wrong, like, please correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it's like, you can really have a field of like, just specializing in machine learning and also specializing in software engineering as a career, or is, are they just like too closely aligned? So it, I, I think it depends on the team. Uh, you can, uh, if you're part of like very core machine learning research, and like part of the big company, they would have teams uh, that, that would do like software engineering work for you. But at Unity at that point of time, uh, it was just basically us doing everything. Yeah. I feel that. So it, it depends on the team and the company. Yeah, definitely. So it feels like this was like a little bit more of like a scrappier team, even though Unity's huge. This is like still like an up and coming team. Yeah. Yeah. And like, how, yeah, I mean, just like how valuable like was that for you? Like if someone's thinking about their career and like, oh, should I join like a large established corporation uh, first like a startup or like a scrappy team like what's like a few things that they should know i think that um uh, working at unity was really important for me because i see a lot of people uh, who are now like have been part of like teams at like amazon and other but being such a big corporation they have like team for like ex like doing like explicit work like yeah so you don't get to see like the overall end to end pipeline so I would say like, if you are in, in the early stage of your career, you would want to be at a place where you get to see the overall pipeline, where you're part of like a project or like you could lead a project. So I yeah. think that is more valuable than um, just working on like one small part. Yeah. yeah, that's what I feel like has been valuable for my career too, is just like, it like I definitely enjoy wearing like a lot of different hats and like I, I, I just enjoy that. But like at some point, like maybe I do want to specialize in just like one thing. Like I have a sales background. So like maybe like just specialize in just sales um, instead of like account management as well. I um, mean, I feel like that's it's just super valuable at a young age to one, like be in a startup mode where like everything moves so quickly, but like to also be exposed to, like different projects or like different areas within a certain field, because uh, then you can really like know like what you want to work on or what you don't want to work on. And so I also want to talk a little bit more about Jenny's. Um, I know you moved over there uh, about seven months ago. 
Um, talk to me a little bit more about like what's been like the difference between like Unity and Jenny's. Um, it sounds like you're really specializing in like this like 3D development, like technology world. Um, I'm just curious, like what's been like the biggest difference? Yeah, sure. So being like a machine learning engineer at Unity, I would like touch like 3D machine learning, but like not a lot. And uh, I was really working on computer vision domain. And uh, I, what I thought like before joining Genies was basically like, you know, with the uh, chat GPD, like NLP is like pretty much at, at its peak. Yeah. Uh, computer vision was already at its peak, like with all the models that were before. Yeah. And now it's like they're moving towards like multi-model uh, models, right? So, uh, and 3D was like not been explored. Uh, that much so i really wanted to be a place where like which, which itself is challenging uh and uh, genies was like the perfect opportunity because they were uh, doing their like avatar tech uh, 3d avatar tech uh, startup right and uh, they wanted to do machine learning with 3d and 3d itself is like a complex problem to do machine learning with because like the representation is pretty much different like in in nlp you have like text information in computer vision you have like images right but 3d you have like 3D models and they can be, it can be a mesh, it can be a point cloud, it can be like a voxel. So there's like different representation and to do machine learning on the, on that is pretty much challenging itself. So that was one of the reason I joined uh, Genies and it, it was also, I would say Unity was also a startup uh, <laughs> because the team I was in, I was it was pretty much a startup. Like Unity is a big company, but it, it was in the startup mode when I joined. Uh, so I had that... Uh, idea of like working like wearing a lot of hats and yeah. unity was providing me uh exact same opportunity with like uh the advantage of working on new problems so yeah um yeah that was a pretty good uh opportunity and how it is different from unity i would say is uh i've worked at the research uh team at unity uh there we would have like no like time constraints like it was like pretty much like you're working on a research problem and yeah. then you would, I mean, they were time constrained, but it was not like you have to like do something by the end of this month. But yeah, at yeah. Genie, it's like R and D. So you research, you prototype. If it works, you develop it and you just deliver it. And if it doesn't work, you move on to next problem. So it's pretty quick, and and I, I like that idea. Yeah, I think it's really fun to like work in like a really quick environment. Like sure, like a deadline's probably hanging over your head. Um... But like at the same time, like it just adds speed and like, I don't know, you work with it's just on so many different projects. I'm curious though, I want to talk about like the 3D and machine learning aspect of it. Cause like, this is a new concept for me. Like, can you explain, like, can you explain that like in very like simple terms, essentially like 3D and machine learning and how those like combine? Yeah, sure. So traditionally we would do like 3D on like images, right? Like for doing like an image segmentation for like if this was the image I wanted to segment my background and put like a fancy Christmas uh, themed background, I would I would like basically uh, would want to like segment my body in the background. Uh, naturally, you would uh, also want to do that in 3D. So where like you have like these uh, 3D models, like uh, let's say I have a model of, uh, so <laughs> I really have this. So let's say these are the 3D models, right? Yeah. So, and I want to perform like a uh, different segmentation on the body so i want like the head to be segmented from the body yeah. so uh it's it's pretty different because like all these models are different and like in humans are pretty easy to like segment right but these are like very varied so you have to do like different uh and the and the input data is different itself like it's like a mesh so you pro you do like graph convolution and other forms which are like non very like machine learning traditional machine learning it's it's a bit different so yeah, so that that is like 3D machine learning, like where you would want to apply machine learning on the 3D objects. So to do like stuff like rigging, so you want your body to like, like move in a certain way, but That's there cool. is no skeleton defined. So you would want to like first like identify it, like where would the joints would be? Like this is my 3D model, like I want the joint to be here, but the yeah. person who created the model hasn't like defined the skeleton. So you want to define that but you don't want to spend like an hour uh, work of like 3D artist. You want to yeah. do it quickly. So for that, you have to train a model and the model has to like predict like where the joints would be, like where would my clavicle joints would be, where would my hand joints would be. So and so that the uh, the model can do that like body pose or motion. 
I was just going to say, so like once you identify that, then like you'll be able to like make it like move together and like not seem like so like jittery exactly. like all over the place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That sounds like a very hard problem to solve. Yeah, it is. It is. So yeah, that's what we are doing. Interesting. So when you have a really hard problem like this to like solve, uh, I just kind of like want to pick your brain. Obviously, you're a very smart person. Like when you have such a big problem to solve, like not how do you solve it, but like what are some of the steps you take on like how to solve like such a big problem like that? <laughs> yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, what I do is pretty much like I have pretty, uh, I would say, smart colleagues. Uh, yeah. I would first discuss with them. And before doing anything on my own, I would also like search for the uh, solution online. Like, if, is there anything that previously yeah. someone has done and that I can uh, I can take a look? And 50 or 60% of time that works, uh, just being this domain yeah. not not uh, like that much explored. Like if this was like computer vision, there would be a chance like someone has like done it already. So I would do that. And then if, if there's like no working solution that exists, then then we would like discuss and uh, pretty much like have like team meetings and um, try to like work on, on a, like make, try to like create a solution for that. Interesting. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, when it's out there 50 and 60% of the time, that's a much higher rate than uh, I was expecting. But like, if you have to like really start from scratch, like this is obviously not a big, this is obviously like not an easy problem to solve. Um, yeah. So I feel like it's uh, really developing. Like what do you yeah, so, after this? So the 50 to 60% would come from like, basically like there is something that was done, but not exactly for this problem. Right. Mm. So I would have to like create like different research paper and then try to create a solution. Really interesting. So I'm sorry to ask this question, but like when it comes to like research papers and like developing it, like what, it, like what would go into like the research paper then um, to like bring this forward? Uh, there are different uh, labs that are working uh, across this problem. And yeah. uh, so like someone would have like worked on uh, mesh segmentation, but for like, uh, not for humans, let's say like just simple objects, like, uh, right and how you can like transfer that over to humans. So that, so those kind of stuff, like, hey, someone has done this for them, uh, but something like this, but can you transfer this over to humans? So, or like other objects. So that yeah. is like, just like using the research, like already existing research on your new problems. Okay, that's super interesting. Yeah, because research papers are for me, they just kind of like go over way over my head, like, whoa, what actually goes into this? And like, how like, are we like providing value to people? So. That's really interesting. And I think it's uh, also interesting, like you really have like, was this intentional? Cause like you're really in like a big gaming niche. I feel like uh, with like Unity and Genies, like, are you like a big gamer? Like, was this like intentional, like you wanted to be in or is it just kind of, you found your way here? Not at all. Like it was just, it just happened. I, I didn't used to like play games at all. Like not, I used to, but like not at the level that people were playing at Unity and uh, or at Genies, like, you know, they were like hardcore gamers. Uh, but yeah, so I was, I was not a gamer and, uh, but then I joined it and I think I started like, um, developing like gaming, um, skills or, you know, like, um, uh, I, I wanted to like be more like an active gamer, but then I was like, no, I'm not meant for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bad gamer. I should stick to like what I know. Uh, <laughs> so I, I, I actually bought like a nintendo switch like i was like okay i'm gonna go hard on this i would i'm gonna be like a pro level gamer but then i haven't used it in like three years i was gonna say after <laughs> like yeah that's how i am i growing up like i used to like love playing video games but now when i play video games like every once every like six months when i'm randomly back home home um i play for like 15 minutes like yeah i, I got my fix in for a long time <laughs> that's so funny <laughs> yeah uh, awesome. Well, I want to wind us down here. I'm just curious, um, like some of your advice that you would have for someone young in their career that's wanting to get into machine learning. Um, what would just be like general advice that you would share? Like what's one or two tips um, to say like, hey, this is how you can get started with machine learning? Yeah. So I think there are uh, pretty good resources out there. Uh, so if you're like struggling with like any one topic, like uh, stats or anything, you can pretty much look for anything right now on, in, on YouTube and Google. And obviously you should, I think the good uh, thing is to have like a mentor. So you yeah. should find a mentor that you can go to and like uh, ask like questions, not like go, going for like asking like solutions to problems, but like, hey, 
um i'm stuck in like I, what what should i do next basically so those kind of questions you should have a mentor and um just like start with ml fundamentals and then find like what which uh, part of machine learning you like because it's such a like a wide uh, subject right so do it eat a bit of everything and then decide like which part you want to and then just um i think uh, cover the uh, breadth but then go uh, into one area like go into the depth of one area yeah and that's what we talked about too is like getting that experience um like a, you had a unity where you can be in so many different areas wear so many different hats and really at some point like actually go super deep with one of them so that's yeah. awesome advice but you are the man thank you so much for joining us Arav. um yeah thank you so much for your time today where can people connect with you where can people learn a little bit more about you uh, I think uh, the LinkedIn would be the best research for that. Awesome. And that'll be down below. So yeah, thank you so, so much for joining today. This is an awesome conversation on machine learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.